we just arrived at Showed Pines, I think it's called, isn't it? Showed Pines, yeah. Minutes, 20 it? minutes, so a quick 20 minute walk, £2 for an hour or something. Yes, yeah, so there's a whole load of walks here. The Mushroom Village. <laughs> it's not where we were thinking it was, it's not where the major oak is, is it? So. No, that seems to be at that uh, Sherwood Forest place. Yeah. Like you say, they were doing a lot of work, weren't they? Didn't yeah. They? Yeah, so there's a sort of all sorts of cafes and things here. There's a go ape centre as well. We could do the dragonfly trail. Okay. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Pops, go and find some dragonflies. Well, that's so I presume we follow the walking trail sign. Quite an interesting thing here. There, some uh, there was a training camp in 1915, just just at Clipstone Mansfield near Sherwood Pines. They said there were 30,000 soldiers tra training here, and there's a they built a, a trench to try and explain to the new trainees what the what the trenches were going to be like. And uh, it just it, one thing it said was a thing about why were British soldiers all called Tommy and they were given a training booklet and you know like we say oh, a, a typical name you know John Smith or something well yeah. they they had a typical name Tommy Atkins oh. and of course the, the all the um, soldiers that carry this booklet were were all called Tommies that's where it came from and that's where it came from I suppose they the German soldiers captured British soldiers. They found the Tommy Aitkins booklet on them. On them, and that's how they yeah. called them Tommies. <laughs> Try. Oh. There's a lot of interesting smells here as well. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is heading towards the trench, the Clipstone Camp. Sixty thousand. 30,000 soldiers were stationed here at any one time. Wow. A war to end all wars. Uh, they had, in 1914, they had to recruit, well, recruited 750,000 men in just eight weeks, the first mass citizen army. Mm. Uh, they, the Germans were going to do lunch in Paris, dinner in St. Petersburg. <laughs> well, that went then. <laughs> you enjoying yourself? Probably seen a load of squirrels. Yeah, you know, saying life at the front. If the trenches were long, narrow ditches, two meters wide, they were cold, wet, fested with rice, rats and lice. The rats stole the food and nibbled on the men at night. The lice caused caused unbearable itching. The latrines overflowed into the trenches and soldiers struggled to get any more than two or three hours of sleep at night. They spent about 15% of their time in the firing line. Mm. And so the average Tommy had to carry a lot of equipment, including gas, mask, rifle, bullets, bayonets, grenades, uh, boots, sheets, capes, booties, and a helmet. They also had webbing equipment, uh, cutlery, shaving kits, water bottles, soap towels and a shovel to dig a hole if caught out in the open. And this sign says about the demand for timber during the First World War. Everything was made from wood, uh, trench, trenches, munition cases, poles for barbed wire, temporary huts. More wood was used at this time than any other war in history. Also said the British Army and Navy fired an estimated 258 million shells and shells were propelled by cordite which has a key, a key component of which is acetone and of course acetone is produced by the distillation of wood so I'm just saying how the forestry commission came into to being 
after the end of the war they looked at how uh, they could uh, make sure they didn't have to rely on timber imports once the war had broken out. In 1918 they recommended the Forestry Act and the Forestry Commission was born. Right Pops, you reading the sign? What's it saying here then? But it's a truly global war. Um, 8.5 million troops were killed, and 750,000 were British. Yeah. I mean, it's just saying about um, women doing work at home. Yeah. Like the Women's Land Army that the Nana the, the, was in. Yeah. 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 Got a picture of her, didn't she, with her hat on? Well, you said at the beginning of 1918, they introduced compulsory rationing. 8.5 million troops. Wow. Little storyboards here. Oh, got to go the other way, haven't you? <laughs> you could start yeah, over there. The <laughs> talking about Ypres. Yeah, you know, just just reading this, there's a reconstructed trench here. Look. <coughs> Beware, live shells, strictly authorised personnel only. Are you authorised, Pops? <laughs> Suicide corner. German soldiers often kept cats in their trenches, not only to catch the rats, but because they were able to give early warning of a gas attack. Oh. Nice for the cats. Eight, nine out of ten soldiers survived the trenches. Being in direct firing line, really quite rare for the British soldiers. This is quite low with this, uh, this bit here. I suppose you've got to keep your head down. Explosions in France were often heard in London. During World War One, a team of miners secretly dug up tunnels under the German front to place and blow up explosives. The sounds of the mines exploded were so great they could be heard 140 miles away in London. That's when we saw the... Um, having to duck here. That's <laughs> so when we saw that at... Um, where was it? When we were in Belgium. Uh, Some of the yeah, uh, mines um, there. Yeah, 69 or... Yeah, th thereabouts. A great huge big crater. Yeah, we're talking about the Christmas Eve truce in 1914. It's estimated a massive 65,000, uh, sorry, 65 million troops took part in the war. It's estimated as many as 8 million soldiers died and 21 million were injured. And at the Battle of the Somme, the British suffered 57,470 casualties on the first day alone. Oh, well, this is really low now. It's all right for you, isn't it? Yeah. It's about the right height. I'll get my head shot off. Dogs here, Poppy. Where? Dog. It says dogs were used to carry messages. Where were we? Where are we <laughs> looking? Oh, there. That's right. <laughs> dogs were used to carry messages and capsules attached to their body and carried and placed telegraph wires in important areas. So you would have had a Good job. job Poppy. Poppy, yeah. 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 Plastic surgery was invented because of the First World War and helped victims of shrapnel injuries with facial dif disfigurement. Yeah. And that was obviously the problem with shrapnel, isn't it? It caused worse injuries than bullets. Yeah, so... Sort of what the trenches look like. So they must have had camouflage over the top of them. Uh, dig out, dugouts for the machine gun posts, I suppose, here. So they were training to dig holes as well, weren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
That's very interesting. Yeah, all along the front it's got a day in a life of yeah. one at the front line at uh, Ypres. Yeah. I think it's about the time the granddad went there, um, January 1917. Yeah. Forest, yeah? Yeah. Hellfire Corner, that's uh, near Ypres, isn't it? That's on the um, Menham Road. Yeah. Yeah. There's a really old video of, um, you know, taken of all the, the tents and everything, and all the trucks going backwards and forwards on that corner. Okay. Day in the life of... A frontline Tommy. Tommy yeah. I said it's Monday, January the 17th, the morning is about to break. Men have been on the front line for five days and the ground beneath their feet has turned from hard frost to thick mud. Yeah. All these regiments kept a diary, didn't they, like the Hertfordshire one did. Yeah. There's your trenching tool. At five o'clock they stand to arms before dawn breaks. That's when the ambush bushes are more likely. They stand to for short, fully armed on high alert, ready for a, an attack. Six o'clock sentries try to stay alert until they're relieved. And they're doing a look at it throughout the night on one hour shifts. Every 60 minutes are relieved from their post by soldiers who've been trying to rest. Sentries are post to periscopes as the sun rises. Nine out to ten men are ordered to stand down so they can't be seen by the enemy. Those who remain are posted to periscopes where their head and shoulders sit below the parapet. Eight o'clock they receive their daily reward. A tot of rum and uh, breakfast that car uh, carrying parties fetch from nearby towns under cover of darkness. Everyone's got to wash and shave at nine o'clock. It's freezing and warm water isn't always available, but it had to be done. Time to clean the weapons, 10 o'clock. Block gun barrels are likely to split when fired, causing avoidable accidents and injuries. Stand two soldiers. Imagine standing in no man's land, enemy eyes could be anywhere, a shot could be fired at any moment. Are you being watched? <laughs> Eleven o'clock they get some time off to relax. Write to the loved ones, smoke, keep diaries. Lunch arrives from the reserve line. So they bring uh, meat and vegetable stew in large pots called Dixies. NCOs make sure everyone eats. Hungry soldiers are quickly demoralised. An enemy sniper strikes. Sniper sees a reflection of a head in a mirror. He shoots and a bullet hits the periscope. No one is hurt, but this part of the trench is now blind. That's the diary, as you were saying about, or a diary anyway. That's a diary, a soldier's diary. Yeah. It's now four, two o'clock and they're trying to sleep. But basic shelters. They also try and visit the latrine because going at night causes accidents. It's the only time a soldier will find himself alone on the front line. Come on then. The late afternoon now to what, uh, three o'clock. Filling sandbags, lifting them in position, ready for the onset of dusk. I've got to keep this work hidden from the enemy. Four o'clock, stand down before sundown. We fix the bayonets and take up night position on the fire step. A ledge dug into the forward side of the trench, two or three inches above, uh, feet above its floor. They can safely fire their weapons without raising their heads above the parapet. No one can smoke, smoke, talk, or move. Five o'clock. Two in three men are stood down. They repair the trench walls and wreck barbed wire. I'm saying, if you look over the top and spot an enemy tank heading straight towards you, how do you feel? <laughs> Don't know. Don't see any tanks? Nope, don't see any tanks. <laughs> it's 
too early to eat before stand to so the men can wait until now. They can't use torches so they eat in the dark which causes lots of accidents. Supper is soup, tinned meat and stale bread. I'm looking for enemy movements and sniff the air for gas. Someone smells something, cries out gas, gas, gas. The shout alerts the troops and expels a deadly vapour from his lungs. The men fit their respirators and take up firing positions. Eight o'clock, stand down. No attack has come. False alarm. Men climb over the parapet to stop German advancement. They go over the parapet to conduct surveillance between the lines. They hide in mine and shell craters. Take a closer look at the enemy. Signboards like this were used in captured German trenches. Enemy trenches were colour coded and temporary signboards were erected once the, pers once the position had been taken. And face is there. 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, nights are cold, they're trying to burn timber from the defences to keep warm, sacrificing long-term safety for immediate comfort. Fires are discouraged but the men are sure to build them where the glow of the flames can't be seen. 2 o'clock, they're exhausted by now. Between shifts they work on the trench or rest if they can before it's time for sentry duty again. Exhausted, some stare out into no man's land. Lee Enfield rifle. That was a standard issue rifle of the British Army. It's a range of over 500 metres. Non commissioned officers chivvy the sentries along. The sentry loses concentration. A raiding party could slip through the wires. NCOs offers words of encouragement to keep the watchmen on their toes. The spirits are low as a new day approaches. Four o'clock. Try and sleep. Others remain on lookout. Lots of cigarettes are smoked to fight off fatigue. So they face another 24 hours in the trench. So could you stay awake? Yeah. The trench life was gruelling. It wasn't just the endless clamour of shell fire and the constant threat of attack, but the simple things like keeping warm, clean and dry that made for a strenuous existence. And that was a daily life for the men of the Sherwood Foresters and all of the soldiers on the front line. Yeah, it's very good. Loads of walks here. No. Supposed to be a campsite here as well. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can see that on the way out.